exactly. And he wouldn't even have enough songs to perform. So there's no rush into doing it. I think he can do that. But I think as a label person, while you're building out the catalog of the artist that you've now chosen to put this money behind, part of your job is to also make sure you're paying to get them rehearsal time. You're paying to make sure they have the right equipment so that when they are out there singing, they're not caught dead looking crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if you're going to invest in someone like Four Bats and wonder if they can like... Bro, niggas at these labels have to do their job now. Mm -hmm. I think that that's what we're realizing more and more and more. It takes a lot to break an artist and have them not just be a moment and have be a real thing. You know what I mean? And not only that, it takes time. Yeah. You see it all with Tate McRae, bro. Tate McRae is just now, I think, having like a really big breakthrough moment. And she's been signed for what? I think like two or three years. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's a long time. You know, it's not... It's not this overnight process, and we as the consumer, because I think before I started working in it, I didn't have a understanding of that. So maybe I see four bats, and I'm like, oh, why hasn't he done a live performance yet? But now, like seeing the back end of it, I see why it it takes time. Yeah, it takes time. There's gonna be ebbs and flows. You're gonna be hot one moment, and you may not be that hot in like two or three weeks. But there is ways to attain that again. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Talking a little bit about label strategy. And working in the industry, I did have a question I wanted to ask you guys. I feel like 2024, beginning of the year, is normally dry for music. Yeah. A lot of people set goals. A lot of new upcoming artists are setting goals, maybe releasing more music during this kind of dry period of the big names. Mm -hmm. Basically, there's just a lot of people out there that are really trying to jumpstart their music career. Yeah. You guys both work labels. We have Miles, who's A and R, and Mar and Ose, who does marketing. So I kind of wanted to get Miles your perspective and maybe some advice to a new artist on what they can do prior to release in recording, in making the music, and then Ose talk about post release marketing the song. Shit, bro. Just some general advice for any young people out there that are trying to break in. Bro, record everything. You don't need a. You don't need like a professional camera. If you have a camera phone, one of the homies that's going to be with you in the studio sessions, just literally record the process and post it to TikTok. Like <laughs> TikTok reels, whatever. Just make sure that it's being documented and you have content of you and the music. You could overlay it with snippets of songs that may not even come out. You could post a voice notes like, oh, what do y'all think of this? How are we feeling about this? You know what I mean? Yeah. Just put your music out there so people can start to understand what your sound is and who you are. And then by the time like by the time the song comes out, you're not just trying to kickstart it late. You know what I mean? Yeah. Kind of start gaining momentum early. It's it's hard. It's really, really hard because, I mean, I see it with, with, the, with the people I'm working with. You know what I mean? Like, these are artists at the end of the day. So for me and you, I think it's really easy to just be like, we can shit post on something like TikTok. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And just put out a million videos. But for them, a lot of the holdup is like, fuck, like, I just had on this fit in my last shit. You know what I mean? I don't want to post like five videos of me in the same fit. You know what I mean? To them, that yeah. does matter. Yeah. And I think you do have to kind of... <sighs> It sucks to say, but if you want to make it your career, you have to treat it like a career. So you have like a job at points, you know what I mean? So not everything is going to be the most aesthetically pleasing or like all perfect and professional cameras and everything. Sometimes you do have to embrace the jankiness of shit. Yeah. And like the like, you know what I mean? Where you accept where you are and work with what you have. You know what I mean? Yeah. As what about you have like a, an artist has like a small budget like where do you recommend spending that in the creation of the music <laughs> like should they be buying studio time and going to professional studios no. should they be getting their songs mixed you know what I mean should they be licensing YouTube beats you know like where would you spend your money get your songs mixed for sure your songs can't sound like shit when yeah. people when people press play that's that because like you could say you got bars you know what I mean but niggas can't understand them or hear them that's gonna dead you what, um, what should an artist do if they don't know a mixer um there's platforms like engineers with different rates for different people um i think you gotta think of that proactively so if you're in a situation where what i've noticed is a lot of artists even before they blow up naturally find themselves in communities of other creatives. Mm -hmm. So I think you got to find homies that maybe do shit and they may not be the best mixer in the world, but 
it's better than you mixing it like some bullshit yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? So go to the homie, go to different people around you and they're going to want to work with you because now when you post the song, you're going to also want to tag them in it, yeah. credit them in it. You know what I mean? Make sure you're giving the people who are helping you out credit. Make sure that you're willing to do a feature on the homie song. You know what I mean? Yeah. Especially early on. You want to just be in environments with other people creating because you never know when one of the homies is going to blow up. Or you could be the one to blow up. You know what I mean? And like just... They're going to want to post your shit. They're going to support you. They're going to big up you. You know what I mean? Then maybe you have an artist who could open for you at a low key show. You know what I mean? If you want to do a makeshift show in your garage, now you have an opener. You know what yeah. I mean? If you're around other artists and shit like that, you have a DJ you could maybe do because your mixer is probably doing something else on the side too. You know, like utilize your community a lot. I like that. I say, how about once, you know, you, you put your song out, maybe it's your first song, maybe it's your third song. I don't know. It's a, you're, you're relatively undiscovered artists people aren't really slapping your music how do you start building streams building a following how do you how do you market that music yeah i mean man, this is a difficult question i mean you could, it I could think, just be a couple tips too it doesn't need to be the whole strategy you know yeah i think well the phrase so i think storytelling is important i know that phrase is thrown around a lot so this is kind of what i mean by it is that you have to form a, a brand identity and like live in that brand identity in that truth like honestly i after all my like four bats bashing, I do think that like the storytelling in terms of like the way he's presenting himself and the way that people are receiving him is like super solid. Like I think being consistent with the ski mask and the, the open mic performance mm -hmm. has been one thing that I've really liked to see the consistency in terms of the sound of the music and the like content of the music where he's, it's like, R&B mixed with hip hop and he's talking about uh, I guess he's like talking about relationships and women and all that type stuff that's been super consistent I feel like the the small little content pieces he puts on social media where he's either by himself in the street or he's with a girl or whatever you know kind of singing to her like that has been super strong I think like you have to decide who you are and live in that truth like if you're like the fashion guy like Every time you're seen, whether it's online or outside, you have to be putting that shit on. Yeah. And if you don't have money to put that shit on, maybe you're not the fashion guy yet. Exactly. Or, yeah. or if you are the fashion guy and don't have money, figure out how to make it work. I mean, even in LA, like thrifting is a big culture. Like, yeah. like how do you how do you make it work on a budget? You know what I'm saying? How do you look fly on a budget type thing? I Most think of my favorite outfits that I've seen around town. I don't. I'm not familiar with any things anybody's wearing. They yeah. could be ten dollars. Yeah. Like it's not. I'm. I'm not like. Oh, you're fly because I know all the brands you're wearing. I'm like. Oh, that fit is just working. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And I think when you also see something that works, you you go after it and you pursue it. Like, uh, I think a lot of times on social media, like even I'll post something where I'm like, I don't really even expect it to get a reaction, and, and once it does, I'm like, super interested. I'm like, what is it about this that is getting this reaction, people? So I'll just post it again and again and again and just like be super repetitive about, yeah, this is a part of what I do. This is a part of my identity mm -hmm. as well. I think that's a really good tip is is testing different shit on social media mm -hmm. and really keying into things that perform well yeah. and trying to repeat that success. 100%. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I think those are pretty much my tips in terms of just like, just really like a strong brand identity is super important. Yeah. Um, and if you don't have that and if you don't know who you are or if you haven't, even if you don't know who you are, if, if you're like, all right, let me write down these like three things that define like my music right now. Mm -hmm. I think that's better than just like not knowing anything and just kind of like doing whatever. And I think obviously consistency on social media uh, is super important as well. Like posting consistently, um, not necessarily every day, but just like if you're going to post a certain type of content, post it. Uh, damn near every day you need yeah. to we got we got to get out of that we got because that's part of the job bro you have to post every day damn yeah um, yeah damn no nah, i feel you it is it is like every day every day but you gotta post okay so i think this is the thing you gotta post every day until you figure out what it is you need to be posting and then once you key in on that a little bit like what's gonna get in the engagement is what you post yes if that makes sense yes you should you should still post it a lot 
but you don't need to necessarily post it every single day once you figure out what's working. Yeah, if it's not working, don't keep doing it. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah it's just, exactly. <laughs> just posting some bullshit that's not getting views every day is. I mean, it might, but yeah, you gotta you gotta be consistent with that. And also, like the last thing I'll say is get a manager and a lawyer. <laughs> yeah. You need a manager and a lawyer. It's hard, I know, especially if you're like just getting it like started, you know. But those need to be your first targets before anything else because it's hard to do everything by yourself yeah i mean i think you can wait to get a lawyer until you're having label conversations i don't think you need a lawyer i mean or brand deals or something like that like but again until you're interfacing with like larger corporations maybe you could put that off but lawyers manager kind of get, get somebody manager, to help you yes. get yeah offer it managers are important so same follow-up to you before we get off this is an artist has maybe a new artist maybe has 500 to a thousand dollars in their budget for marketing their music what are you doing? Are you telling them to shoot a video? Are you telling them to get placement with influencers? Like, how, how are you spending that money? You said 500 to 1,000? Yeah. I would probably... Well, definitely, you're going to have to stick to social media because, like, that's going to be your free tool, right? And I would, I would pick, like, three different platforms that you are going to be consistent on and go for them. Like, I think that, obviously, TikTok has been, the past few years, the biggest for music discovery, but I think Twitter is super underrated. Um, and then obviously Instagram has become like a portfolio website. So maybe those are the three you go with. And like, obviously it's free to post on those platforms. Right. So I'd go with that. Uh, I would shoot a video, but I would probably shoot like iPhone videos. If you have 500 yeah. bucks, yeah, just shoot content. Like don't shoot like a full blown video. Like maybe shoot like, again, like what four is doing. Like just shoot these like little vignettes and then like cut Good them word. up and <laughs> yeah, cut them up, filter them and post them. Like, yeah. That's kind of what I would spend the money on. And then maybe, maybe Twitter blog placements. Just depends on how good the music is. If people are reacting to it, you, de you definitely want to spread it to a new audience. But I would, I would honestly save that shit to eat food. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You only got $500. I mean, you think, <laughs> you think they should buy like tripods? Like for the iPhone and, <laughs> and set them up, you know a, ri a <laughs> ring light, a ring light. Yeah, yo, maybe you know, maybe a tri maybe a tripod. Maybe so you don't film themselves yeah, going, to going to Target. To Target. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love it. I mean, I guess kind of speaking to social media, I want to get Osei's opinion of it because it's working for the nigga. You know what I mean? If you guys don't know what we're talking about, there has been a man who started a dangerous trend on TikTok <laughs> where he is filming himself getting dressed. Doing all the extras and then going to Target. <laughs> <laughs>